Now, our listener with Alzheimer's who scored a hit record has conducted an orchestra one year on to celebrate. Paul Harvey is losing his short-term memory. He needs daily care at home. He calls his sons and forgets that he's done so. Dementia, though, can't blunt his skills at the piano. His improvisation around four notes was orchestrated at the suggestion of other BH listeners 12 months ago. Launched last October, Rocket Fueled by BBC Breakfast, the hit single raised £1 million. We've this update for you now on how the money's being spent and what happened when Paul picked up his baton again. We just walk this way, So here I am in the tuning up process with Simon Webb, orchestra manager of the BBC Philharmonic. Hello. Hello, Paddy, and welcome to Salford. So today we're recording with Paul Harvey. He'll be playing the piano. He'll also be conducting the orchestra. And it's the first time Paul has been to Salford. It's the first time he's met the orchestra. For all the great success of the original recording, this is the first time we've all been in the same room together. So I found Dan Wibley, who's the bassist who orchestrated the piece. It's an incredible achievement, the amount of money that's, that's been raised. My mum has Alzheimer's. She was recently diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Uh, she was a musician, she was a cellist, and she gets great comfort from listening to music. It's such a powerful thing. I know that sounds like a cliche, but it, it really can help. I've been playing for, with orchestras for 30 years and I've never been conducted by someone with dementia, although some of the conductors I work with <laughs> questionably <laughs> had other problems. corner with Grace Meadows from Music for Dementia which has gained hundreds of thousands of pounds from this project. All the money has already been distributed to 31 organisations across the UK so everywhere from Scotland down to Cornwall we have supported organisations that provide music therapy, singing groups, live music making groups, a whole range of activities. What about our listener who doesn't play? It's when the music has a personal connection that's really important and I think that music stays with us throughout our lives. So it's really about finding out what music somebody loves and then using it at the right time with them and in the right way. And that could be sitting together, listening, sharing a memory that that song evokes, holding hands. It's that quality of contact that you have together when you have a musical experience. And you've had one today, I think, looking at you. <laughs> I sure have. One that I will never, ever, ever forget. Ever. At this point, I was about to leave the rehearsal, but then Paul came back to the podium to conduct a much older piece. He wrote Where's the Sunshine for a school review back in the 1980s. Lodged in his long-term memory, everything in him seemed to change. I was watching alongside his sons, Tom, Simon and Nick. I mean, bits here, it's just absolutely beautiful. It's, I've known this piece since I was a kid. Muscles work differently. <laughs> yeah, his um, his brain is alive. He's, he's just so energised. This moment seemed to bring it all together. Zimmer frame cast aside. Paul raised both hands in command. I'm sure I saw tears, but were they my own?
Well, we've heard the music, now here's the man himself. If I could stand up straight, it would come back again. I, I, I know it could come back again. <laughs> yeah. But on the other hand, that didn't impede what happened. It was very moving to hear it. Does oh, the piece well, move you? Well, they, they are wonderful players. Who wants to listen to me play? You know. <laughs> our listeners with friends and family with dementia and our listeners with Alzheimer's, yeah, yeah. what's the message of what's possible versus what you thought was possible? Anything's possible. And music just continues where the printed word stops and you, 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 you can make what you want of it and uh, anything's possible. You know, it, it, I think if we got a few politicians who were musical and were interested in music instead of faffing around like they <laughs> were doing before, then, that, 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 then we would be getting somewhere. Everyone would listen to some music and enjoy it and peace would reign forever. Lovely to meet you again, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. Our thanks to the BBC Philharmonic. Yes, there they are, uh, applauding the conducting of Paul. The first piece we heard, Four Notes, was conducted by the marvellous Ellie Slorak, with thanks for her. Now, the conductor, the news conductor, Johnny Diamonds, entered to preview 1pm. Uh, yeah, Johnny, what's... Gosh, gosh, your eyes just prick with tears, don't they? They, they really do, do. They do. No, I mean, it's just amazing to see him. He sort of stood up straight, Johnny. No, when you said, and he sort of lifted himself from his Zimmer frame.